Okay, it's uh, got a free Saturday morning here, and it's time to get that uh, carburetor off and uh, get it over to the workbench. And we're going to take that thing apart, and uh, we're going to take a look and probably have to soak that thing, and uh, hopefully can get that idle circuit cleaned out, and so this engine will idle a little bit better than it had been. I now have all the uh, linkage off, tags and brackets, springs, all the little mi mini, all the little tiny clips and everything. I highly recommend you take digital photos of everything before you start taking things apart. Uh, one thing you will notice: there are screws under this cover, so you gotta get that cover off. Make sure you get all the internal screws out because um, it's not coming off otherwise but yeah take note of everything uh, the way it was uh, it's probably been apart before these cars got a lot of age on them so don't assume that everything's correct but at least take photos so you can get it back the way it was when you took it apart so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this top cover off I've got the top cover off now and um, Like I say, I have rebuilt this carburetor before, but it was a long time ago and it sat on the shelf. So, um, all my settings and everything are probably going to be pretty close to where they need to be. The main thing is, my goal is to get this thing really cleaned out good again. Because it did sit, and I must have left some old gas uh, in some of the ports or something. And I'm sure there's, it's varnished up. So we're going to keep going and start taking everything down. Um, so we can get this thing soaked in carburetor cleaner. And then start putting it back together. i got the lower half <clears throat> taken off here now. And you can see there's some crud and stuff in there. And i got the bowl... Most of it taken apart. I got some jets and stuff to take out of it and everything. Um, normally, I probably wouldn't take all these shafts and stuff out. Your throttle shafts and stuff. But, all these sh throttle shafts and stuff need to be restored. Uh, they need to be cleaned up. Bead blasted. Uh, put some protective paint or clear on them or something. Uh, before it goes back together so that it will have to come apart for that reason but my main goal is to get the main components in some carburetor cleaner let it soak and get all the crud out and while that's soaking I'll get all these little pieces cleaned up and restored so they look nice um, but uh, there's a lot of parts in this carburetor um, so you definitely want to take photos uh, service manual is very good um, it shows all the components, so you shouldn't really have any problem um, getting it back together, but good idea to take some photos, try to be organized with your parts, and uh, take your time. Now, the, the little uh, butterfly valves here, they're staked on the back side. You can see that. They've staked them. And if you try to get those out without grinding off that little snub, there's about a 60-70% chance you're going to break off the screw because they're brass. And so what I use is a little die grinder. I just grind off that head, take them out. Now the second problem you're going to have when you put it together, um, you got to do something so those screws don't come out. Otherwise, uh, you're going to destroy your engine. Um, and the only thing I can think of right now is what guy's been using is Loctite. Uh, use some form of um, maybe a blue Loctite so you can be removed again. Because I don't know if they can be restaked because you've basically ground the head off, uh, the end off of that little screw. Uh, the, the other alternative is to try to find some from new screws, which I suppose is possible. Um, if you get the right thread pitch and length, you could probably order them and then uh, restake them 
so there's different ways to do it but the last thing you want to do is break a screw off in that shaft because that's uh, really going to mess up your day get the carburetor completely apart and this is about as far as you can go on any carburetor um, pretty much got everything apart another thing you want to do is when you take your jets out you definitely want to label them because your uh, primary and secondary jets have different numbers on them so you don't want to be putting those in the wrong hole when you go back together you're going to have a problem so I guess the next step is just get her cleaned up get her soaking and get the parts I want to restore cosmetically get those done and uh, we'll get the, I got the new gasket set and we'll put this thing back together I've had the carburetor soaking now for about two days I'm going to take it out parts of it and see what it looks like looks pretty clean this stuff is really nasty this is the stuff that they don't sell in California anymore and it's a chem dip carburetor cleaner and um, it really reeks too through some stinky stuff so I'm going to be very careful with it and if you, I guess why I've got it outside here if I was inside I'd be wearing a respirator this stuff's really nasty smelling so, got your rubber gloves on. Be really careful you don't get it in your eyes. Read the MSD sheet on this stuff. It's uh, <laughs> about four pages of deadly poison. So, be real careful with it. And uh, we'll fish those other pieces out and we'll take a look at those too. This is what the carb looks like after I took it out of the carburetor cleaner and. Uh, rinsed them off good and this has still has a gold tint to it this center bowl section and I understand that's what you look for you want that gold tint on there it doesn't take <coughs> excuse me doesn't take it all off and then the upper part is a nice silver and the lower part is a nice natural aluminum silver and it looks like the stuff did a pretty good job and I blew it all out I'm going to double check um, all the air passages one more time and make sure uh, there's nothing plugged up and I got a few more items to work on all these uh, ends of all these shafts were kind of rusty so they're gonna get bead blasted and I'm gonna give them a shot of that Eastwood uh, clear coat made for bare metal and that seems to really look good it's a very it's a satin so it uh, looks like it's just bare metal and I've used it before and um, we'll see I've started the reassembly of the carburetor and one of the first things I'm doing is I'm installing the throttle shafts which I removed um, I highly recommend that you don't remove the throttle shafts um, but I wanted to restore the shaft area it was getting rusty and um, so I removed those screws so now you've got the issue of trying to get those screws to stay in so, <coughs> excuse me so basically uh, you've got a choice of trying to restake them I'm going to use a little drop of Loctite in those holes and uh, that should hold them in well, let's hope so right so that's the next step I have the uh, throttle shafts in and I uh, loctited my screws in with um, uh, it's the blue loctite it's the removable type and I set up my throttle plates so they open properly and you want to tighten those screws with the throttle plates closed so they line up properly so they're even side to side so that's cool I got that done and I'll move on here's a quick tip that I've used uh, for quite a while now on the restoration of this car is that a lot of times you're taking stuff apart you got little springs 
you got all kinds of little pieces and you know you're take them apart you're throwing them in the cleaner a week later whatever you're pulling them out and you're starting to put it together and you're thinking okay how does that spring go on there I take digital photos of all the small components and I got quite a stack of uh, pictures here um, and I just print them on a um, laser jet printer which is very inexpensive they're black and white but it tells you shows you the detail of how the spring goes on so I don't have to spend 15 20 minutes digging through the service manual um, trying to find a photo of how that goes together um, you get a picture you print it take it out to the shop or better yet if you've got a small laptop bring it right out to the garage with you and have all the pictures right on the laptop and uh, you can easily take a quick look see how it goes together uh, so you're not wasting a lot of time um, I picked this thing up this morning I couldn't remember how the spring went on exactly printed that picture right there shows exactly how it goes on so you're not wasting a lot of time float adjustment that's where we're at right now um, this has a new style uh, float they're called date or needle excuse me they're called a Daytona needle and they're actually flat on the end compared to the tapered ones that we're used to and uh, there's some uh, information on that that basically is telling us uh, that it's a superior I guess if I get it right side up superior needle um, blah 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 well that's what I got so anyway what I do is I take I look at the spec and it means I don't have the actual Buick float adjustment tool the spec is an eighth inch so I get a drill bit I check it with my dial caliper make sure it's an eighth inch and you check it without a gasket and it's supposed to contact the float right in the middle so what I do is I just rub it along like that until it actually bumps the float which is right in the middle I check both sides and then you also have to check float drop which basically is how far the float drops and with that I use uh, my dial indicator there so take some time um, get that uh, set correctly make sure the the floats are straight uh, vertical up and down so they're not going to rub the side of the bowl housing or anything and um, we'll just keep moving along here one more very interesting note um, this little tag was uh, inside the uh, the new float valve and it says Carter applications use three gaskets um, underneath the uh, the float valve here and I tried that and the float adjustment was so far off that I had to bend the crap out of the floats to get them right so what I did was I took out one and I put two in and it came in very very close to what the original setting was so just take a note of that I'll experiment with those gaskets on this Daytona float valve and um, so you don't you know anytime you bend a float it's dangerous you gotta be really careful you don't want to screw it up you could actually bend it so much you damage the float so you gotta be really careful messing with those floats um, so I pulled one out and it seems to fall back into the proper range um, so I guess you're on your own on that one to see how your carburetor is uh, the carburetor is just about completely assembled I've got my accelerator pump adjusted properly, my mini rods are adjusted, choke levers adjusted, um, my lock for my secondaries with um, the choke is adjusted right, so now you open it up and then the choke is released right there. You can see that lever move down. That's cool. So now I got everything set here. about got it finished a few more things to do 
they're calling for some type of graphite grease to be put into these holes of this shaft here. Um, I don't even know if I can find that stuff anymore. But we'll figure some type of lubricant to put in there. We got uh, one more test I want to do uh, before I put the carb on, and that's to check the um, the start switch that's built into the carburetor. And I basically have a 2 amp 12 volt charger here. I just have an old excuse me, trailer light. I got it rigged up with a couple of wires. And um, and that's the moment, that's the, that's the amount of opening of the throttle when your starter engages. And I believe there is a factory specification, but um, I guess there's some shims in there on the spring that you can play with. Book says put everything back in the way it was. I guess you have a starting issue or problems. Um, you could uh, go in there and play around with those washers that are inside there and change them and just see what happens. Um, uh, I didn't I have to do a little more research to see if there's actually a, a spec for that. Um, initially, I haven't been able to find it, but I'll take another look. I just put everything back the way it was. Um, it seemed to start good before, so we'll see. It is something that can be changed while the carburetor is still in the car, so not a big deal. And it came out real nice. You can still see the gold tinge faintly on the bowl part. Everything has been clear coated. All the metal parts anyway. And I think it came out pretty nice. I got all my adjustments done. The only thing I want to do yet is um, hook up my electric fuel pump and check it before I actually bolt it to the engine to make sure it, the float valves are seating properly and the fuel pump, uh, the accelerator pump is working. Um, other than that, this thing's ready to go. Yeah, I opened them up a little bit. Um, we're still running under 600 there. Pretty darn good. Pretty quiet. Got a really smooth uh, exhaust here. Engine's quiet. We got a little work to do yet on it to get it right, but um, I think we'll come along real nice. 